Hello everyone, welcome. Farming has changed a lot over time. In the past, people worked hard to find new ways to grow enough food for everyone. With help from others, like scientists, researchers and engineers, they found new ways to cultivate the land, grow crops and water them. They even learned how to grow food without soil. This made farming easier and more productive. Our farmers got a little luckier, and we are now able to produce more food than ever before. We are about to enter a new era in history, thanks in part to new technology like smart tractors, combines, robots, drones, and biotechnology. New advances in satellite imaging and artificial intelligence will change the way we sustain this life. With technology, we now have the clearest opportunity to improve the lives of billions of people. But we still have some challenges, like climate change, water scarcity, and poor soil. To solve these, we need to keep coming up with new and better ways to farm that don't hurt the environment. These new ways must be efficient too. We can create new jobs and strengthen existing agribusinesses. That way, we give everyone the opportunity to thrive and grow, help society mitigate her toughest challenges, and bounce back from the climate disasters we have to face. Now, you understand we don't take our mission for granted to make every farmer live large. While it may be bold, our approach will always be data-driven. Because our goal is to make satellite data work for everyone and push more farmer into prosperity. I am honored to have our friends and so many of you join us across Nigeria, Africa and around the world. As you may already know, farmers have had a mixed result in recent years, with some years being better than others. We cannot deny that farming is becoming more unpredictable. So we have a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Good morning, distinguished ladies, guests, and colleagues. It's good to see all of you here celebrating the first ever State of the Farm uh, conference. This is a pivotal moment to reflect on the progress, the challenges, but also the opportunities we keep seeing in food systems. Before I get into the issues, I must commend Rural Farmers Hub, a youth-led Nigerian uh, startup, for organizing this event. Your dedication to advance agricultural innovation is truly commendable and we as Agraria Farm, our commitment to continue supporting the youth through Generation Africa. It is through collaborative endeavors like this that we pave the way for transformative change in Africa's agriculture and food systems. Agra has spearheaded several initiatives that effectively incorporate youth-led innovation and technologies into Africa's food systems. We partner with young agripreneurs through competitions and grants that target women youth, especially in Women Agropreneurs of the Year Award Wire. We partner with youth in Go Getters and Pitch AgriHack competitions, and we've seen through Generation Africa and enabled 15,000 youth to bring forward ideas that have won over 700,000. Our Women in Agribusiness program, the Value for Her and Value for Her Connect, has reached over 500 women. Some of them have been awarded up to 500,000. The Generation Africa Fellowship program has supported 26 young entrepreneurs and it's growing. One of them, for example, is what we are celebrating today, the Rural Farmers Hub. This internship has provided mentorship, training, investment linkages, and connections to the D-Room. 
These initiatives have not only empowered young innovators, but have also catalyzed positive change in agriculture and agricultural food systems around markets and value chain efficiencies. We look to these initiatives to unlock the immense potential of youth-led innovations to drive agriculture and food systems transformation across the continent. AGRA has committed to continue to identify and nurture more young talent in agriculture and food systems. We are expanding our outreach through targeted youth engagement programs, capacity building initiatives, and entrepreneurship and mentorship. Ultimately, we want to see more youth contributing to sustainable development of food systems, more youth involved and engaged in food systems across the continent, and we want to see you youth that are already involved in the sector encouraging other youth to participate in food systems. We want to change the sector together. We want to change the narrative from hunger to food security. We want to change the narrative from poverty to improved livelihoods. We want to change the narrative from a poor continent to a wealthy continent. We know very well we can't do it without you. It's your turn and it's going to be your call. Are you ready? Thank you again, Rural Farm Hub, for bringing us together and for giving me the opportunity to speak to young people and challenge you to be part of changing this continent. We have been working with farmers for over half a decade now, providing them with personalized training on precision farming tips, supporting them with inputs that help them switch to more sustainable farming practices, breaking down complex satellite data into simple digestible nuggets of farming wisdom, and helping turn losing farming enterprises into predictable and profitable ones. We have made tremendous progress, but there is one problem. The science in agricultural science is still missing in most farms on our continent. As a result, they lack the desired quality in the harvested crops. And that quality begins with a healthy soil. Hello, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Yvonne Pinto. Welcome to the Future of Farms 2024. Um, my current role is working for a company called Eagle Genomics, in which I'm involved in um, strategy, innovation and sustainability. And my particular area of interest is agriculture. And uh, within that, uh, I'm interested in soils. The company I work for works in microbiomes, both animal, human and uh, environmental, which includes soils. Uh, today, I wanted to tell you a little bit about soil microbiomes. Okay, so soil microbiomes are made up of very diverse microbial ecosystems, lots of different types of organisms. Soils in that context provide 98% of our food and um, may also cause 20 to 80% of loss in yields due to human activities on soils and the impact of climate change and erosion. They are a critical path for plant health and they are influential in relation to drought, flooding, heavy metal, uh, heavy metals, etc. It's the it's the top five to ten inches of the soil where uh, new topsoil is generated very slowly. So it's only about 0.25 to 1.5 millimeters a year, and it is the 30 centimeters in the uppermost uh, uh, fraction where organic matter and minerals are concentrated and are of prime importance predominantly to crop plants. The leaves and the dead vegetation decay, they provide fuel and carbon, and the soil structure enables porosity, which uh, enables water, oxygen, nutrients to flow and to enable roots to penetrate through the soil. Soil microbiomes are quite difficult to generalize because they depend on multiple factors. And uh, in different geographies, there'll be a different context related to competition or cooperation by other microbes, the ecosystems, cultivation methods, and fauna will also be different. But soil microbiomes provide uh, some important services to plants and the environment. On the left-hand side of this diagram, you'll see their importance both on the leaf and in the root uh, for pest and disease control through um, 
biocontrol agents, through competition, natural competition between good and bad, so healthy and pathogenic organisms in the soil, and mycoparasitism. Those are really important for things like bioremediation and natural attenuation. On the right hand side, they are involved in the stimulation of plant growth. They are able through phytohormone regulation to um, induce a plant's uh, resistance response. They are also involved in the solubilization of phosphorus, atmospheric nitrogen fixation, and the liberation of certain nutrients for the absorption by the plant uh, and to enable the bioavailability of those nutrients. And finally, they're also involved in the biodegradation of uh, organic matter and in the formation of soil itself. And those are really important uh, services for roots in the plant. And they are involved in aspects related to um, reduction of greenhouse gases and carbon sequestration. So they are becoming extremely interesting uh, in the current time. With novel techniques such as network science, bioinformatics and sequencing technologies, we are able to sort of understand what the um, characterization of those microbes are in the soil. We're able to look at their alpha and beta diversity, and we're able to begin to understand that uh, they carry certain functions by looking at functional genes and by using things like uh, proteomics, we're able to understand what sorts of proteins and enzymes they produce and the functions of those. What's really interesting and what a lot of people forget is that plants themselves have genetic material that actually conditions what microbes they recruit through their root, root exudates. So there are a number of publications here that, um, that illustrate that uh, plant microbiomes uh, can be exploited to recruit the right kinds of organisms in the right conditions. And there are new plant breeding strategies to enhance this opportunity. There may be spatial and temporal dynamics of microbial communities that need to be understood in terms of their influence on these plants. Uh, and there is an opportunity to use these detection methods to understand the metabolites that these organisms produce and what impact those have on the plant themselves. So there is a whole body of evidence that is now developing that enables um, plants to be able to um, identify how they create these microbial associations. And there is an increasing importance in understanding that these microbial associations and their architecture determine the ecosystem services of the soil. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Today, we will explore a groundbreaking solution for farmers called CAPTURE, which we believe is addressing these concerns. This app puts the power to monitor crop and soil health right at your fingertips, allowing farmers to make informed decisions about their farmlands and farm input. Imagine it, a real-time data analysis guiding you towards the optimal planting times, water management strategies, and pest control measures, all accessible through your phone. Capture App is designed to transform the farming landscape as we know it. It empowers farmers by providing them with essential data and expert advice in an easy and timely manner. From pre-planting to the bountiful harvest. But what makes Capture truly exceptional is its ability to revolutionize the way we see farming, boosting productivity for all farmers everywhere. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Neka Iwamu, and I'm the Country Managing Director for Hello Tractor in Nigeria. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be here at the State of the Farm Symposium organized by the Rural Farmers Hub with rising food prices and food security fast becoming the number one policy priority for governments at the national and subnational level, this year's theme, Sowing Seeds of Innovation, captures the essence of Hello Tractor's decade-old mission. This is because we, alongside many other participants in today's 
crucial symposium are precisely those seeds that are driving a revolutionary transformation across Nigeria, Africa, and the world. Let me share a powerful story. Just two years ago, Hawa, a Nigerian woman from the North Central, hoped to cultivate her husband's land and build a sustainable future for her family. Through our training programs and the Hello Tractor app, Hawa not only achieved her initial goals, but transcended them. Today, she leverages her earnings as a booking agent to expand her family's operations, becoming a true testament to the empowering potential of technology. Stories like Hawa's illustrate the profound impact that Hello Tractor has had on empowering smallholder farmers. Our platform also bridges the gap between innovation and accessibility, providing essential tools and resources to unlock their agricultural potential. But make no mistake, we're not just another app or another ag tech company. We go beyond simply providing mechanization services through your phone. We support the entire mechanization ecosystem, from the farmers who utilize the tractors to the operators who drive them and the technicians who maintain them. We have built a nearly seamless value chain across the country and internationally by plugging the loopholes that make owning and operating a tractor more difficult. Yes, 10 years ago, a stark disparity existed. Sub-Saharan Africa had a meager 27 tractors per 100 square kilometers compared to the global standard of 200. This lack of mechanization limited productivity, hindered food security, and disproportionately impacted women, the backbone of the agricultural workforce. Ten years later, Hello Tractor is proud of the progress we have made. By stepping up to bridge those gaps today, we have solidified our position as the largest digital tractor marketplace in emerging markets. We have also increased our acres under management by digitizing and mechanizing the operations of one million farmers. And for me as a woman, one of the things I am most proud of is that we have enabled more women to become tractor owners through our innovative financing program. Today, one in three of our finance tractors are owned by women. But these achievements are just a water drop in the ocean that we envision. This is because we understand the critical need for scalability and collaboration to ensure lasting change across the agricultural landscape. We have our sights set on future partnerships, furthering our engagements and facilitating the empowerment of more individuals and communities. Because we recognize the crucial role governments play in fostering a conducive environment for agricultural innovation, we are actively establishing new relationships with national and subnational authorities to advocate for policies that support increased mechanization and empower smallholder farmers. Because we believe in the power of a collaborative ecosystem, we are reaching out to private tractor owners and integrating them into our platform. By doing so, we are increasing the available tractor fleet on the app and ensuring wider reach to farmers in remote locations. Finally, because we are committed to creating more opportunities for individuals to participate in the agricultural process, we are constantly equipping and training more young people to operate and maintain tractors while also exploring new avenues to facilitate individual tractor ownership through innovative financing solutions. So I encourage everyone to actively participate today. Together we can explore the potential of technological advancements like the Hello Tractor app and the Hello Tractor disruptive approach to fixing problems and maybe we can find new ways to collaborate to sow the seeds of innovation for a thriving agricultural landscape in Nigeria and across the entire continent. Thank you all for listening. Capture app was first launched in 2018. This innovative app was designed to help users break free from this cycle of uncertainties. Capture is all about enhancing yields and enabling users to make the most out of every square meter of their farmland. Till date, it has touched the lives of over 30,000 farmers who have experienced a remarkable increase in productivity of about 35%. Let us start with Capture's premium feature, CropWatch. CropWatch helps put the predictability of crop yields back into farmers' hands. Let's say you got this land that you want to cultivate. It is historically fertile, but your harvest has either remained the same or it's fluctuating. 
You could download the capture app to any Android device, map and upload the farm coordinates in three easy steps, wait for a few minutes, and a full audit of the farm soil appears. The other good news is that if you are planning to start farming for the first time or open a new plot, CropWatch can help. That way, you are sure you will get value for money. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to be here today at the State of the Farms 2024 to share how we are sowing seeds of innovation in Africa's dairy industry. Um, our gathering today symbolizes not just the exchange of ideas, but the collective aspiration to transform the agricultural landscape through innovation. In this spirit, I'm thrilled to share with you our solution that is also reshaping the dairy industry in Africa and beyond Moon. Mumi is not just a product or a service. It is a revolution in the dairy farming sector. Its inception was driven by a simple yet profound question. How can we make dairy farming more efficient, sustainable, and profitable for farmers, especially those in rural areas in Africa and Asia? Mumi is a technology-driven solution designed to bridge the gap between traditional farming practices and the digital age. At its core, Mumi leverages technologies such as data analytics, Internet of Things, to monitor and manage daily cattle. But what does this innovation mean for the farmer, the community, and the industry as a whole? Firstly, Mumi's impact on farm efficiency is undeniable by providing real-time insights for each cow's health, reproductive status, and milk production, farmers can make informed decisions quick. At the same time, farm financial insights and overall business efficiency are provided to farmers. And this precision in management reduces the cost of operations increases milk yield and ensures the health of the herd directly contributing to the sustainability of dairy farming operations. Secondly, Mumi is a testament to the power of innovation in addressing environmental challenges. Sustainable dairy farming is not just about profit margins. It's also about measuring and reducing our carbon footprint while ensuring the welfare of our animals. By optimizing feeding practices, improving health monitoring, and ensuring efficient use of resources, the data that is Mumi providing contributes to a more sustainable agricultural ecosystem. Thirdly, Mumi is a beacon of hope for rural development. By equipping farmers in remote areas with access to advanced agricultural technology, we are democratizing the benefits of the digital revolution. This empowerment leads to better yields, higher incomes, and an improved standard of living for rural communities, and thereby addressing some of the fundamental challenges of rural poverty and migration. Moreover, Mumi's innovation lies not just in its technology, but in its approach. It is represented, moreover, Mumi's innovation, moreover, Mumi's innovation lies not just in its technology, but in its approach. It represents a collaborative effort between technologists, farmers, agriculture experts, and corporations, ensuring that the solution is not only technological, technologically advanced, but also practical and accessible for its end users, the farms. This collaborative model is a blueprint for future innov innovations in the agriculture sector, emphasizing the importance of co-creation and partnership in driving sustainable change. In conclusion, Mumi is more than just a success story in agriculture technology. It is a beacon of innovation that embodies the spirit of this session, sowing seeds of innovation. It challenges us to rethink 
the boundaries of what is possible in agriculture and to envision a future where technology and tradition work hand in hand to create a more sustainable, profitable and equitable world for all. As we uh, continue our discussion today, let us draw inspiration from Mumi's journey. Let us commit to nurturing the seeds of innovation in our fields, farms and communities, ensuring that the future of agriculture is also as bright as promising uh, as the technology we harness. And uh, finally, thank you for your attention. And I look forward to the transformative ideas and partnerships that will sprout from this session. Thank you. My farm used to get hit hard by diseases without any warning. But with capture, I can be able to act fast with targeted treatment. It's like having a bird eye view of my entire farm, allowing me to catch up the problem without even reaching the field. Thank God for this technology. My uh, farm product is now healthier and bountiful. Crop Watch watches crops using proprietary algorithm, collecting and analyzing primary and secondary data of farmlands into powerful, actionable insights. Capture is your digital guide for precisely monitoring and managing soil and crop statues using remotely sensed data. It smartly combines soil, crop, and climate data into powerful insights for farmers, organizations that support farmers, leading to improved and desirable outcome. We have the best-in-class software design in precision farming, combining big data with best agronomic data that is processed through our proprietary software. And this can be delivered to all users. Hello everyone, thank you for having me here today. I'm really excited to share my research experience and contributions towards responsible and resilient aquaculture in my research titled Effect of Moderate to Low Fish Meal Diet, supplemented with a blend of organic acid salt on the growth of African mud catfish juveniles. As we may know, aquaculture has become a major player for food security, conservation, economic growth, and a viable alternative for um, dependency on wild um, capture. The industry has experienced tremendous growth in recent times with Asia contributing over 80% of global production. The importance of aquaculture has also been recognized by developing countries like Nigeria where catfish production covers the, like most of the markets. However, we cannot say that aquaculture is without um, challenges and some of those challenges are associated with um, sustainability and environmental concerns. Particularly, the use of fish meal in feeds have dragged um, some sustainability concerns and the application of feed add additives have proven to have some potential threats to the environment. These concerns have made the need for groundwork innovations that promote sustainability and minimize environmental impact imperative, which is why I would like to talk about nutrition, which is a critical aspect of livestock production. It constitutes over 60% of production cost, and it does not only detect the well-being and growth of the species, but it also influences significantly the economic success of that business. Our, my project ventured into replacing meat and bone meal, um, um, replacing fish meal with meat and bone meal as a substitute for protein. And our results discovered that 22% of fish meal can be replaced by MDM. The experiment was a 60-day feeding trial. Data was collected on the growth, nutrient utilization, survival of Clarice Garapinus juveniles that were fed with MBM enriched diet. To tackle the other problem I talked about of um, additives and AGR, the diet was were supplemented with graded levels of organic acid salt. And although the, the, the salt did not really affect the growth of the species, Clarius in this case, but it improved their antioxidant, improved antioxidant activities, biochemical parameters, and methodological parameters of this, um, um, the fish. And this is really important because healthy fishes are better for the market and also they are better for post-harvest handling. The outcome of this project is not a finality in any way. It just opens a gateway to more possibilities that can happen in the research sector to be applied in real life um, 
production systems. This study should be a catalyst for further exploration and refinement of locally sourced agricultural inputs. It should transcend into other sectors of agricultural production, technology, and improving food production system while putting into consideration the health of man, species in our environment, and the ecosystem at large. Finally, I would like to extend my gratitude to all of you who have listened, the organizers of this um, um, program, stakeholders in the agricultural sector. It is really possible that we can chart a new course towards sustainable and thriving food production systems. Thank you so much for listening. Capture provides the following information. Soil physical properties, such as soil texture, you will know the percentage content of clay, sand, silt, and stone. Soil chemical properties like aluminum, carbon, nitrogen, organic matter, pH, cation exchange capacity, nitrogen, and others like phosphorus, potassium, calcium, iron, magnesium, sulfur, and zinc. You can also know soil fertility map with precise yield-based fertilizer recommendation as well as crop health monitoring for an effective decision support system. With this powerful insight, the user is able to identify ecological advantages such as what crop is suitable for my farm and what potential revenue to expect. Hello everyone, greeting from Zimbabwe. My name is Ruan Samashumba. I'm a farmer as well as the founder of an organization called Munandi Africa. Today, I would like to share with you my story and the vision behind Munandi Africa. So Munandi Africa is an organization that exists to transform um, rural agriculture in, in Zimbabwe. The main challenges, challenge that we have faced in Zimbabwe is that most of our people depend on agriculture to earn an income, and yet people still live below the poverty datum line. This is primarily because of um, the intensity of droughts that we've been seeing over the years, which have resulted in farmers not being able to to produce or farm. So Munandi Africa is um, is formed around addressing the challenges of smallholder farmers. So the people we are prioritizing um, in Munandi Africa are the smallholder farmers who we see as marginalized. Um, they don't have access to capital. They don't have access to, um, to inputs or even knowledge. Um, they have small pieces of land, um, usually um, one hectare to about five hectares. And most of them farm using ox drone equipment and um, hand holes, which is very difficult for, um, for these farmers. And uh, most of our farmers are also women farmers, which are 60% of um, the labor force in agriculture are women farmers who, um, again, um, are very marginalized and um, depend on agriculture to feed their children. A lot of the times you find that these women farmers are breadwinners of their families um, with their husbands, either they're late, um, from various diseases or they have left um, the country to seek greener pastures. So women are left alone to fend for themselves. We also have young farmers um, who we're trying to um, support as well. Uh, we've noticed that the average age of the farmers we're supporting is above 60 years of age. And um, very few young people are involved in agriculture because they see it as very labor intensive. Um, so we also are trying to promote them and support them. And we've also seen that there's a lot of um, homes that are run by children because of um, having all parents late and then the children are the um, the breadwinners of that family. So we also look at how can we support these young people to be able to use agriculture as a source of income. So our model um, as Munandi Africa is um, three pillars. So the first is that we, so we train farmers um, to access knowledge in um, conservation agriculture, which is a method of farming, especially in the intensity of the drought. We also have um, e um, equipment that we um, lease out to our small water farmers for them to be able to farm effectively instead of using labor intensive um, processes uh, like the handholds, which doesn't achieve um, the correct conservation agriculture methods that we are promoting. We are also um, um, supporting our farmers to access inputs as well as um, better markets um, through an input learning scheme and we give our loans at 0%. And what we have seen is that um, the farmers are very keen to fight to be able to pay back their loans and increase their, um, their, their fields and produce more. Um, so this is, an, this is evidence that women are um, very motivated to see um, changes in their lives. 
So, so far, Munandi, we've, able, we've been able to support um, 2,000 farmers uh, since inception, which was in 2018. And um, these farmers, we're seeing them now engaging in um, conservation agriculture methods, and they're able to practice them at home. We've been able to lease out our machinery to um, over 5,000 farmers. And from that, we're seeing that there is um, increase in adoption of conservation agriculture. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, most of our training is in um, is in the native language. So we are able to really communicate and we have manuals that we give out to um, our farmers with a lot of illustrations so that they can go back home and look at um, what they've been trained. And we've been seeing that there's also a reduction in post-harvest losses um, amongst the farmers, which is increasing the amount of food security in, um, in each household. And also farmers are now able to use equipment, like tractors, which they were not able to access in the past. So this is a testimony of uh, one of our um, ladies that we supported that before um, she started working with Monandi, she had always seen that, um, you know, farming is very labor intensive and that it's, it breaks your back. And uh, now with the use of um, equipment, she can now um, have a better life. So since 2018, we have been developing our model um, to make sure that we are addressing the various challenges in our community. And as you can see in 2021, we were having um, big challenges of our um, outage. So we have a demonstration plot. So we've been able to put in um, solar to address that. And we've been able to now build stronger partnerships um, with various people in the community. And of late, we've introduced conservation agriculture because the droughts that we are seeing have intensified. So our vision for 2030 is to be able to support 25,000 farmers, increase um, household income to $1,000. This is per year. Um, the data we collected, we found that most of our farmers are um, earning less than $60 um, because they don't have any other means of making money. And um, we hope to have an ad adoption rate of no-till um, by 100% by 2030. So this is a team of our diverse um, people in our organization, finance, monitoring, evaluation, field offices. We also have tractor drivers, agronomists that are supporting us to achieve our goals. So um, as Manandi, we're continuously fundraising and we hope to be able to unlock the full potential that um, our Manandi um, can um, achieve by supporting these rural um, farmers. So we're also grateful to for us to be able to achieve this. We've had um, a lot of partners who have helped us um, achieve our scale um, to date. So we are forever grateful for their support. So thank you so much for listening through my presentation um, of Monanti Africa. And if you have any questions, you can email me. My email address is below. Um, yeah, we want to sow the seeds of Zimbabwe's agriculture future. Thank you so much. One of the most loved features of Capture is our intelligent fertility maps, giving farmers precise yield-based fertilizer and seed rate recommendations. The user also receives alerts on the dashboard and through text messages on the crop health status and related important information with tips on what to do. All these are provisioned in a single dashboard. Our sources of data include Earth Observation Satellite, Agronomic Research Data, and also Synthesized Data. The output is then post-processed relative to the BBCH scale for a real-time personalized precision advisory. As you can see, it conveniently pulls out the amount of carbon and organic matter in your farm the level of macronutrients, and it looks pretty close to what an expert soil scientist would have derived from a laboratory analysis. Maybe you want to visualize it a bit more to elaborate the spatial variation of the nutrients. This further highlights the big picture of any deficiencies and where it's occurring. This helps you focus on improving soil condition where it actually matters, all before ever breaking the ground. Da na kesho kudi ataki de yewa de yewa agona kena zansa awonang de yewa 
duka kaya kina zasu dinga mutu amma yanda capture suka zo suka nuna mu yanda zai yi amfani da kaya kina wuna wanda sun kawo mini na samu kaya ki da yawa sun ce sa nan zan sa in sun ce sa nan zan sa na gode masu yanda suka zo da wannan capture din nan Allah zai ba ma su kowa robon shi zan sake kawo su a bokanaina da yawa sun gani abubuwa wanda na samu sun ce me na amfani da shi na ce capture ne suka yi min wannan abu kuma na gode masu na gode masu sosai Hello everyone, I'm Soha Nasser. I'm an agri-food innovation expert and the managing partner of Acelera Agro. I'm very happy to be here with you today in the State of the Farm Symposium. I am Lebanese and I live in Angola like since half a year ago. But today morning I had an aha moment while leading a study on the adoption of agricultural innovation and technology in farming. And the numbers were a bit shocking for me because they were not clear before in my head. And some of the numbers I was reading is that in 2018, so before COVID, like 239 million people in sub-Saharan Africa were undernourished and 399 were food insecure. So it's 30% of the population of sub-Saharan Africa back then. So you can imagine what COVID, how COVID had like really uh, boost this the situation and made number higher and while while i was reading i was thinking at the same time that we like waste 30% of the food we produce around the world nowadays so while we are like wasting that amount we have in in parallel 30% of a population really suffering and not finding something to provide for their families and put on their plates on a daily basis. And I think even before reading these numbers, the idea was clear in, in my head and in the head of my, my partners at Acelera Angola that we need to do something in the agri-food situation in sub-Saharan Africa. And this is where the idea of Acelera Agro came up and we started incorporating this a uh, uh, separate company that is only focusing on incubation acceleration and business support in the agri food sector but when we went deeper into the analysis of the market system dynamics we we knew that we have to do more than just ex- acceleration and incubation because creating the solutions is very important specifically solutions that are frugal and that are like user friendly and so on that will help adoption at, at farming level but if the adoption is that low it means that we need to do more so our vision is not just focusing on acceleration and incubation we are looking as well into IP valorization so going to researchers uh, seeing what they are uh, doing in terms of applied sciences and see what can be commercialized and what can be beneficial for the farmers to adopt uh locally to have a uh, better yield and on the yield point i i would say like also some numbers that i was reading in sub saharan africa a hectare of land gives only 50% of what this hectare of land can give in other low to middle income countries around the world and the same hectare can is giving now 20% only of its biological potential so we can produce five times more a uh, field of production of food in one hectare that we are what we are producing today and unfortunately what we are doing to compensate for this lack of of yield in 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 our production is to expand on geographical basis so to expand into natural spaces instead of improving the yield of the same land we have that we are already using so we are in need for real actions on on this level real innovation in the agri food sector real use of technology and adoption of technology by farmers to be able to improve, improve this situation but we also believe that the future is in the hand of the youth and honestly and bluntly youth are not really interested in the agri food sector the agri food sector is not the most appealing sector for for youth today with all the technology all the ai all the tools that they are seeing 
it does not come top to mind for them that going back to the land, sowing and cultivating and harvesting and being patient until your plant gives you the yield after a few months is not something that is really appealing to a generation that is being used to, to everything that is fast. So we knew that we have also a mission to do on this level. And this is why I'm here today. Uh, this is what I'm here to tell you today, that we are working a lot. And here we call for youth to be inspired, but we also call for um, uh, partners and, and people who are, have the same mission and vision to, to come and partner with us to be able to make this impact. What we are looking for is to support youth in, in their uh, let's say in their uh, journey throughout the sector. So we went to universities, we started talking to students, understanding their challenges. And what we noticed is that everywhere students are very good at theoretical level. So they get a lot of knowledge out of university. But what they lack is the practical experience, which is the know-how. So here we started thinking, we, we, we bought our farms in three different locations in Angola for now. These farms will be our experimental hubs where we have like laboratories, pilot plants and kitchens uh, and land for experimentation. And these lands and, and, and farms will be open for entrepreneurs, students, uh, researchers, corporate, everyone who would like to experiment and make sure that we are creating uh, better solutions for the agri-food sector are welcome to, uh, to join us. But specifically for students, we are looking into scholarship programs and apprenticeship programs so they can get the practical experience make some money for them to uh, like save, save during uh, studies, but also learn about what is happening in this sector, what is a best practice, what can, be, what can be done to work with our entrepreneurs on their solutions, maybe to become a co-founder later on, or, or get inspired on specific challenges that we will face with them in the farm and later on decide to become entrepreneurs on this. But the main message of my intervention today is for the youth to understand that everything can stop Everything can be challenged around the world, but food. We always, we will always, and we are always in need to eat. In COVID, we were all in lockdown. Everyone stopped working almost, but except the people who were working in the food sector, they, they kept working, they kept running. I was back then working in industries. We still had to go to the industry, taking all the, the measures during the lockdown just to deliver food to people because no one can survive without eating. So this sector is a great sector. This sector is a very promising sector. The investment and, and the investors became interested in the, the sector the past like decade. Uh, spending a lot of money on innovation and this sector is very promising. What I'm here to say is for youth, you are the future and you decide if the future will be food secure or not. And we are here to help you. So anyone who is interested in becoming an entrepreneur in the, 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 in the food sector, who is interested in making an impact at farm level, to create their own businesses, to create job for others. I know every student is worried about what I will be working when I, when I will graduate. Will I find a job or not? Create your own job. This is, this is what you can do. Take, take control over your, your opportunity. Think about the challenges. Find a challenge. Work on it. Find a solution for it and make your own business and create jobs for others and create with us a better future for food. So we are here to collaborate with anyone who shares with, with us the same vision, but we are also here to make an impact and to make the future of Sub-Saharan Africa's food security a better one. Thank you. Now. Before we launched Capture, only big farm enterprises had access to this crucial data and insights. Not anymore. Cutting-edge technologies are behind what make Capture do these things 
which is help you get the outcome you've always wanted consistently. Better and predictable yields every single year. Identification and mitigation of risks at various levels. Optimizing the application of your farm inputs and actually making more money predictably. When you fall sick, you see a professional caregiver, preferably a doctor. The question begging to be asked is, when your crop falls sick, who do you see? How do you know in time that your crops are going to fall sick? How do you know your farm is giving you the desired harvest for the chosen crop? Is there going to be a devastating flood and will it affect your farm? When will the rain stop falling so I can apply fertilizer? Will there be a drought and for how long? These are the fringe concerns that most agribusinesses and farmers cannot address by themselves. Addressing this concern is why we exist. We are the pioneers in stepping down cutting-edge technologies by making advanced agricultural insights available to all farmers as text messages, USSD, interactive voice response, and even through budget Android phones, making it more accessible and useful for them, for agribusinesses, for community, for everyone. We are continuously applying soil and satellite data to computer programs. This has made our offering radically superior to the competition and more helpful for farmers. Recently, we are taking the next step by introducing predictive and generative AI into the mix, available in private beta in English only, and later in more languages. This is a bold step and responsible approach to reimagine farming and productivity all around. You are welcome, my audience, my listeners across the value chain, students, uh, farm practitioners, researchers, and uh, I'm one of you. I want to let you know that um, the agricultural space in Nigeria is a, is a gold mine. And I can tell you this, if you do the right. And you don't have to carry comments on how to go to the field. You can operate along the value chain. You can be a seller of seed, input, fertilizer, and agriculture. You can go into tractor harvesting. That's agriculture. You can go into uh, storage facilities. That's agriculture. You can go to processing. That's agriculture. You can go to eat fish. That's agriculture. You can even go into export. Uh, trade market of the of uh, this that's agriculture. So, it, it, agriculture does not mean you are somebody carrying cutlass a horse going to the sheep. That's not what it is. That was farming, good farming. Agriculture is about uh, information is available to you, have it, and you can even become uh, uh, a CBA, you can become an expert, a consultant, an advisor in your locality. You pick all the information you need from us, and then you can distribute to the farmers. Our right, information are free, don't sell it here. This institution is the only extension research institute in Nigeria, one of the 18 research institutes in the country. Uh, driven by the Ministry of Agri and uh, Food Security. I welcome the need to tell you some of the things we do here. We are mandated nationally, have a national mandate to do only one job to convey and disseminate proven and cultural innovations, proven innovations across the value chain to all the field actors, right from input to field cultivation to processing, marketing, moving to the table, interest. Um, this institution was um, part of IR before, that is the city for agriculture research by the early 60s became a unit of that institution and started running all our mandate was about the north, the northern region. 
and I can tell you that some of the news, the success stories, you must have heard about the northern agriculture, the the driving force from here with respect to informing the farmers. You must have heard about the the, the granite pyramids in Kano. Mm. You must have heard about the cutting that led to the the installation of factories and uh, industries, textile industries in Kaduna, that actually gave Kaduna its name. Mm. The driving force and all those came from here, information to the farmers. And uh, what you do is very simple. Whatever innovation that we lay our hands on, whether they are from the research institute, locally, or yeah, globally, that you see and verify that is going to be useful to the farmers to try to unlock the meanings, try to decode so that come to a point where understanding can be gained on that innovation. The level of research, research outputs and, on, and their findings, because they are specialized language, the content is not going to be useful to the farmers until you pass it to the extension system. And so that is basically our, our work. And we do this right from the section of this institution. We do this in various ways. One, we do is through um, farm demonstrations. After we verify any innovation, and you see it is good, it can be adapted, now push it. So the extension system in Nigeria, the extension structure in Nigeria is the agricultural development program. It's called the ADPs. All the 36 states, including Abuja, have. All, all of them have. And, and, and we now, after we have decoded, we have brought up the meanings of the innovations, the findings, the whatever it is, we now push it through capacity building, through training of the extension managers, and the extension agents. We we'll do capacity building, and then they can now step it down. The farmers. That is our work. Today, our product have served so many users, businesses, and organization. This motivates us to continue delivering on our mission, which is to do everything possible that improves farmers' livelihood through innovation and by opening access to essential information to every farmer in Africa. Looking ahead, the goal is to continue building more layers of user experience that makes this offering inside capture more accessible and useful to every user. This is a profound way to secure our food system and we are doing this in four phases. First, we plan to roll out the capture app to medium and large scale farms. This expands our reach while strengthening our market presence. In the past six years, our focus has been on smallholder farmers who have less than one hectare, who, by the way, make up 43% of the market pool. Expanding our focus to farmers with one hectare or more will strengthen the food system and rural economy even more, a ripple effect that benefits all. Second, we will be enabling self-motivated individuals and entrepreneurs build and transform their own products and services on top of our platform using HAPI. We believe that by adding technology and efficiency to agriculture, we can attract more young people to farming, agri-tech startups and professional services related to farming helping to create youth employment opportunities and bridge the agricultural sector's age gap. Third, by fostering and enabling collaboration with other agribusinesses on all axes, partnering with local mills, aggregators, cooperatives and farm equipment manufacturers through technical and business support, helping improve their operations while improving the general quality of service expected from farmers. And finally, by leveraging 
more AI tools responsibly so that every user can benefit equally. To achieve this, for example, we must partner with OEMs to increase the purchase and adoption of computerized tractors for precision farming. For people who already own farm equipment without onboard computers, the discussion will be headed towards upgrading and making them compatible with accessories that make precision farming possible. We are so excited by the opportunities ahead. So I want to take a moment to share an announcement. Starting today, every feature and service on Capture can also be integrated into any third-party apps thanks to our latest geospatial data processing engine. Developers and entrepreneurs can build their own agri-tech app and power it with our APIs. Uh, Zuang Apcho, I da ina noma selwa ya zoya kwachi. Koku masena gama shuka, ba za ailuwa ba. Amazu a kapcho sununa mulo kachinda ya kamata inyi noma. Har yanzuka duba ampani ngwanana yende ya ikyo. Toe ina ima kapcho ngo dia, ba abunda den chemai ina masu go dia. Hey, good afternoon, good morning or good evening everyone. This is Lalit Gautam. Let's talk about the three major problems we are facing in our agriculture ecosystem. And, and, and according, because of the lack of data, because of the lack of insights, and there's a lot of issues in agriculture, climate change as well, we're facing three major crises. We're wasting a lot of crop and food we produce, so we are not able to you know, get the benefit of the entire land, and we are not able to feed the entire population by 2030. We're using a lot of excessive fertilizers, wasting a lot of water and input cost, input resources, and of course the financial losses as well, high labor costs, you know, the other data variables as well. So now, uh, I'm Lalit, I'm the founder and CEO of SenseGrowth, which is a soil intelligence platform, or I would say climate intelligence platform for agriculture. As I mentioned, we are leading to the three major problems in our agriculture food ecosystem. And these are global problems, not specific to one country or region. The use of excessive fertilizer, wasting 70% of the fresh water goes to the agriculture use cases. Lack of decision support, which means we do not have the data or the facts to back up this industry. And of course, the low yield and the high labor cost as well. Unfortunately, the only way to find out what our agriculture required to find out that way we have only one conventional way we randomly pick the soil samples food samples go to the lab do the test less accurate highly expensive very slow process to get the report card and report card is not sufficient to what exactly we need to do with the data required the analytics required the experts sometimes people go to agronomists but this is also not a very very concrete and like you know, you know affordable option so what we have done is imagine a tool that gives you an actionable in inside data from your soil it's like an apple watch but for your soil or for but for your agriculture so we after two years of research and two patent we have designed and developed this ai agronomist that reduce your input cost up to 40 percent increase your yield and profitability up to 20 to 25 percent by providing a very personalized AI-based recommendations that are also been validated by the corporates. So let me tell you how the product works behind the scene. We are the first company who process four types of property data layer to give a very personalized recommendation. We use our own proprietary NPK and the soil sensors, which you can see on the bottom left. We right now using the sensors plug and play devices. We are also working on the autonomous rovers. Then we use the nano satellite and hyperspectral satellite imagery, weather data, and the user input data from users or even publicly available data also. And all the data goes to the AI agronomist where we calculate hundreds of silos or hundreds of ideal data points to give recommendation according to your uses to the corporate as well as to the farmers. You can see this is how the product looks like. Very robust, very advanced SaaS platform which you can operate your field while sitting in your bedroom or in your dining room. 
So you can see we use the combination of multiple data, multiple unstructured data, I would say, and AI at a very dynamic level to give very personalized recommendations of fertilizer uses, water uses to save your cost and increase your yield as well. So you can see, of course, we provide multiple value propositions from, from the user input, saving the cost, getting the right crop, all these things. But I think we broadly categorize into the three main category to reduce the input cost, which means saving fertilizer, saving nutrition, water saving, energy saving, yield improvement, like data improvement, improving the data, improving the yield, and of course, profit per income. I'm sure you have seen a lot of act tag and you, you was me admiring, like, hey, what's the difference and all. But if you see this industry, we are the first company who tried to cut, capitalize the the power of data because if you see there are active companies those are only using satellites drones weather stations sensors but nobody's doing everything at one go and agriculture required all the data pieces agriculture required a 360 degree solution so capturing data from the multiple sources you using an ai at a dynamic level and making it affordable that's most important part because if you see most of the active companies are operating in US and developed countries made for corporates, large family farms. But I think the 72% of the global farms are small to mid scale farms coming from Africa continent, Asia continent as well. So of course, I'm not going to the model, but I think business model also needs required. But I, I have something to, to tell you about We'll, we'll talk about this in the session, like what are the right grow to marketing strategies for active companies like us. But let's talk about my background quickly and then we'll we'll wrap up. So I'm also a third generation farmer, born and grew up in for India, but living a lot of year in US and Europe now. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a scientist, I'm a stem cell scientist, doctor of pharmaceutical science, an MBA. I have an exit before. And overall, team have a 30 year of experience with a bunch of mentors and advisors to, to building this next gen act tech solution. And, and I, I want to conclude this presentation with two important things, two or three important things. The first thing is, apart from this nice analytic and data driven platform, I'm building on two more platforms as well, which is designed more for the small to mid scale farmers market, like, like in Africa or like in Asia or like in Latin America. The one is a Agri fintech. We are building a, a digital financing platform for the farmers to connect with the financiers. And the second was is a sourcing platform, like procuring the crops directly from the farmers. Of course, it may be familiar, but these are very new and cool, advanced things which we are building. Um, I'm also visiting uh, Africa, few countries in Africa. One in Nigeria, Rwanda, Ghana, Kenya, right, and of course maybe other countries as well but i'm visiting this on somewhere in the mid end of april and may so if you're around i'm looking for the co-founders looking for the stakeholders farmers cooperatives ngos governments so if you're listening this and if you want to meet like you know you just feel free to reach out to me and and that's all from my side happy to take any questions during these sessions thank you so much and have a wonderful day you will hear more on the api shortly for now Let's take another look into the heart of the matter. Capture App is an advisory tool that is changing the way we understand and manage our crops and soil. A game changer, especially for rural farming communities. Traditionally, soil analysis involves the arduous process of collecting samples from the field, sending them to the lab, a task that consumes valuable time. With the Capture app, this has changed dramatically. We can now swiftly and efficiently, with a little click of a button, gather precise soil information that allows us to optimize our farming practices and boost productivity. Not only does Capture save users precious time, it also puts money back into your pocket. This remarkable technology leverages predictive models to provide near real-time insights into the status of your soil. It grants us the ability to visualize the nutrient levels across our farmlands, instantly identifying areas rich in nutrients and those in need of nourishment. It's like a visual map for your soil health. 
Now, even without formal education, the color-coded representations in CAPTCHA makes it easy for anyone to understand. It gives you a clear graphical representation of how the nutrients vary across your land. Armed with this knowledge, you can efficiently apply fertilizer with precision, directing resources to the areas that need it the most. This smart and intuitive approach ensures that you get the most out of your farming efforts, saving you money and increasing your yields. Capture is more than just a tool. It is a catalyst for agricultural transformation in Africa and the rest of the developing world. It represents a shift in our approach to farming where the quality of production takes center stage. And it all starts with the health of our soil. With Capture, we now have the power to unlock the full potential of our farmlands ushering in a new era of sustainable and prosperous agriculture. Now pick up your phone and call that farmer you know, could be your father, mother, sibling, other family members, a friend, the friend of a friend, or someone you just know. Guide them on how to install the app. A prosperous farming venture is here. It is here now. Now let's talk about APIs. Our API is one of our fundamental infrastructure and platform for collaboration. It is highly capable of a wide range of tasks and easy to integrate into your system. Every product and feature we are announcing today is powered by our new and latest data processing engine called Harvest API 2, or HAPI 2 for short. HAPI delivers excellent foundational capabilities across a wide range of scale. It can handle various sizes of farm from 0.3 hectare to a few tens of hectares in a matter of single digit seconds and up to 5,000 hectares in a few double digit seconds. HAPI makes the logic of our apps stronger thanks to a standardized way to expose collection of spatial temporal data. HAPI is a highly capable uh, infrastructure. It really shines when complemented with domain-specific knowledge. Here are some examples of HAPI and how you can get the most out of it. A RESTful is the bare minimum needed to interact with processed geospatial data. Additionally, it standardizes metadata fields, naming convention, and catalog structure it is fully extensible, allowing developers to add attributes to better capture their use case or data sets. We are working to add more capabilities to HAPI so that it can synthesize information faster. That way you can build that project or app faster. HAPI 2 builds on the progress made from HAPI 1 by focusing on faster processing time, lean methodology, and clean code. It was created from the ground up to be a highly efficient tool for third-party integrations. We are already seeing impressive capabilities not seen in the previous version. As our technology gets better and more capable, one of the most exciting opportunities for us is making them available for anyone to engage directly with. That is, the opportunity we have at Rural Farmers Hub, and it's a pleasure to share them with you. Agriculture is the background of food security, and yet it faces numerous challenges. For decades, the productivity of crops have remained unpredictable. In Africa, the productivity of grains is less than half of the global average. Crop productivity is unpredictable and this, this is due in large part to the lack of access to latest information before breaking the ground. Farmers require data to make informed decisions on what to plant, when to plant 
and how to prepare the soil. Inadequate electronic registration of farmers inhibits their access to essential services like machine rental, fertilizer, and financial services such as insurance. These are essential during the pre-planting stages. Capture is a game changer that offers the latest precise information for crop and soil management. Farmers can now plan their pre-planting phase, ensuring the right crops are chosen and the soil is adequately prepared. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Odeme Joseph and um, I'm a farmer, a project management professional and the founder of Farm Monitor Africa. So Farm Monitor Africa is <clears throat> a piece of technology. Um, I really don't like to call it an app. It's more of a farm management system that tracks, that monitors, that manages and improves uh, farmers' productivity um, using artificial intelligence and machine learning. So we basically serve two categories of um, people, two categories of users, the farmers themselves and the farmer financiers. So for the farmers, we, we provide a crop calendar that is automated, that is climate smart and is powered by artificial intelligence. The um, data system coming into the artificial intelligence system comes from six different sources, from satellites, um, satellite images from soil, from um, rainfall patterns, that's weather analytics, from recorded activities, and from crop um, images that is snapped on the field and lessons learned that is gathered from the field, both, both historic and, and current versions of that. We integrate this with an AI-powered um, algorithm. It makes um, farm recommendations very specific to each farm um, based on the geo coordinate of the farm to tell the farmers the best windows to perform their activities. And for the farmer financiers, based on all of this data we are gathering from the field, we are able to provide them real-time visibility. So they are able to see in real time what the size of their land is or the size of their project, what's going on in terms of activities, are the people on the field doing what they should do when they should do it, and what's the crop health status um, using several satellite um, indicators like, NDV, um, like NDRE, NDVI, RE, ECI, all those technical things. I don't want to bother everybody with. So because we are also able to provide farmer financiers this level of details, they are also able to invest more. So in a sense, it guarantees um, some sort of financial inclusion um, to the farmers because the people that are giving them the money are able to see and audit what they are doing in real time. There, there are several things this piece of technology does. For instance, there is the yield um, predictor so again because of the level of data we are generating we are able to tell what the crop will yield before the end of the season so usually farmers have to wait till the end of the season to know this is what my crop will yield or this is what i actually got but we know the bulk of what happens during a farming season happens in the first two three months in fact the first one two months really and so because we are able to track the activities from land clearing we are able to uh, the algorithm is able to pick up details of what's going on with the crop and we can now forecast the yield for you before the end of the season so meaning that if you have several projects you can see how each of those projects are performing especially if you are a farmer financier and you can take better informed decision so the other thing the system does is um is we have a crop scanner so you you can snap with the device your crop and is able to diagnose the what is wrong with the crop in terms of disease, in terms of what's not going right, the, the pigmentations and all of that. So the system can diagnose that and then make recommendations. It's also interesting to know that these recommendations are sent to farmers um, via text messages in their local dialects. So we currently have like eight um, local dialects. We have Swahili, um, Arabic, Yoruba Hausa, Igbo, French, English is general. And so this is sent in those local dialects um, depending on, of course, the option you choose to use on the system. So um, the predictive nature of the of farm monitor makes it very superior to gap recommendations. So you know that usually when a farmer goes into the field, he goes in with an EOP, economics of production, with the fundamentals, use four bags of fertilizer, use two bags of urea for maybe a hectare of land. Okay, so that works. However, because of... Um, soil degradation because of climatic changes a lot of things are not um 
are not as they used to be i mean there, there have been variations in these things rains are starting earlier sometimes later we are now ex experiencing flash floods and all of that uh, so it now becomes imperative to have a superior information beyond gap and that's the peculiarity that's the real value of farm monitor that it's able to look into your field and make farm specific recommendations to you and say okay with the flood that has happened you now need an x amount of bags of fertilizer or you need um you don't need to bother about herbicide because i mean all of that so so all of those kinds of dynamics so our ai recommendation is way superior as a matter of fact um, as of today is testing at 88 percent accuracy and so that that also means that you see have a whooping um, um 88 means we have at least 12 percent um human elements um, in terms of decision making so whoever is deploying see has a decision to make so for instance if the system predicts that it's going to rain today it just doesn't mean that you have to jump into the farm it means that you have to also look at the weather and make an informed decision because there's always going to be that human decision making component of of using farm monitor so we don't take away your choice we we just advise the system just advises on what you are to do and hopefully when you follow it like i said you have an 88 percent accuracy in your crop harvest so the essence is to improve yield because all of these several factors um, climatic factors soil degradation factor human factors they all interfere with all yield in nigeria currently has a yield average of rice for instance of 9.1.9 um, 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 metric ton peak in pay uh, 1.9 kg per um, per hectare instead of um, four ton per hectare it has 1.9 ton per hectare instead of four ton per hectare which is below even half so our, our national yield average is somewhat about um, 40 something percent which is not good enough the idea is to use a system that drives your productivity upwards 70 80 percent now if you are hitting somewhat about um 3.5 ton per hectare you you will definitely be productive which is the other challenge we are having um we, we the the cost of the eop has gone up i'm talking about the peculiarity of the nigerian situation now and yet our yields are not have not really gone up because in fact at, the opposite is the case the yields are coming down because of soil degradation and all of these other factors that i just mentioned so that's what farm monitor is really about as as a piece of technology and like i said it's it's, it's not just the climate smart calendar it's a full management system so there are other modules like security and um, where you you can press the button and the panic button there's a provision for that on the mobile version wherever you are and you would have security respond to you we have um the audit systems for the financial financial so um, the baselines are basically the eop and whatever happens on the field as you record we are taking the system is calculating how much you would have spent so at the end of the day the farmer is able to know how much the farmer actually spent did you make profit or did you not make profit and all of those recording activities are very user friendly very simple to use and they are all in several languages it also has the model for of course crop health monitoring i think i had mentioned that and also the other model for farm audits so if you are a farmer financier for instance and you have several farms um the system is able to audit that these farms don't overlap because sometimes you have field agents trying to play smart and um, giving you sizes of farms that are not the true size and sometimes these farms are overlapping because they want to probably get more money or um uh, get more input as the case may be so farm monitor provides an audit system for you to audit your farm for you to audit your farmers so it has facial recognition um um um, um capabilities it has um, um fingerprint capabilities it's actually a full database that you can use to audit your farm and um, so this is what we are doing in the agricultural space and um, please visit farm monitor www.farmmonitor.africa and check us out download the app try it out this rainy season and i'm sure i'm confident that you would love the experience thank you again my name is daniel udemy joseph the next feature is weather sense in the face of increasingly severe and frequent disruptions, there is an urgent need for high impact solutions that build the resilience of farming communities with a focus on climate resilience. In most farming communities in Africa, crop yields have stopped growing entirely. The breakdown of food system is the biggest threat of climate change and adaptation is the differentiator in who survives and thrives in the wake of this. 
If adaptation was an app, it would be called WeatherSense. WeatherSense is enabling users to withstand disruptions and build for more equitable society. WeatherSense delivers incredible weather and climate intelligence at a global scale. For example, weather now casting, weekly forecast, and seasonal predictions. With these, you can optimize for when to plant, when to apply fertilizer, and other farm activities. WeatherSense also helps you optimize your pest and disease management plans, calculate growing degree days, uh, year predictions, and also irrigation planning. When complemented with agronomic information, weather data can be the difference between a predictable harvest and a poor, unpredictable one. Thanks to the information analyzed, users can easily adapt their practices and timing to variable and extreme weather conditions, giving them a sense of awareness and a technology they can trust to perform better under the changing climate conditions. Now, this does the heavy lifting for you. New actionable layer over weather data will be rolling out in the coming weeks. It's a pleasure having me. Uh, the name is Isaac, Isaac Eni. I am the technical coordinator for market to rented agriculture, Sasakawa African Association, Nigeria. We have an office at um, number eight Kura Road of Magadiro Fajari in Kano. And uh, Sasakawa is a, it's a non governmental organization and specializes in areas on disseminating uh, improved and proven technologies to smallholder farmers. And I've been doing that in Nigeria in the past uh, 30 to 31 years. And uh, we have reached a lot of farmers across maybe over 5 million farmers across the nation, both as extra core activity and uh, even core activities. As I said, Sasakawa is an uh, extension dissemination organization and uh, using the uh, value chain approach, which has to do from production, uh, processing and uh, for harvest and even marketing activities. And of, of recent to have been included in issues of uh, consumption, nutrition, balance diet and others. So based on the value chain approach, Sasaka would also have um, developed its own extension pillars along the value chain, which we have the regenerative agriculture, which has to do with production, the nutrition sensitive agriculture, which has to do with um, value addition and processing and storage, and of course the market related agriculture, which has to do with uh, market uh, linkages and uh, sales of produce and even import access to farmers. Uh, so based on these three pillars, uh, for the genetic agriculture, uh, is to promote um, improve uh, to improve the soil health, and also add, as we improve the soil health, we also tend to increase the production and productivity of the farmer, and also taking into cognizance the issue of uh, climate change. So we promote technologies that will also mitigate against the advance of the climate change uh, adversity we are having now. We are as in the sensitive agriculture. Studies to promote value addition and balanced diet amongst women and children, especially. While, as I said, for the market oriented agriculture, it's actually to promote agriculture as a business away from the traditional cultural you know, orientation that our farmers have in, uh, in practicing agricultural uh, activities. So, for RA, we have a lot of uh, new technologies that we are promoting that we would like uh, our farmers to adopt in this uh, going forward, especially from 2024. Uh, the first one is, uh, is the voucher, the voucher technology, which is a soil amend amendment practice by burning uh, rice fox under pyrolysis, which actually help to improve the soil structure and texture. Because uh, most of our soils have been overgraded with a lot of time with different compaction and others maybe through tractorization or even animal and works. So by, by the time you incorporate biochar into the soil, you have to loosen the soil so that there could be 
um, easy infiltration of both uh, air and other nutrients within the soil. Then the other approach to also promoting under the area is the bocashi. This is a soil amendment and practice used as organic compost. Uh, this we are also trying to promote the use of organic compost. We all know the problem we are having now with the high cost of organic fertilizer. So all those things are, are really becoming a problem of us accessing even fertilizer from our major suppliers from uh, across the globe. So we are trying to look inwards, like the farmers should begin to uh, formulate or develop their local uh, fertilizer. And the Bokashi is, is an organic compost that and all the materials for the that compost, you can get them from your backyard and uh, gardens and maybe some of the items that you throw away as your refuge. You can just combine them and you then you add some few things, and then you compose you decompose them, and within a week or two you have uh, your organic fertilizer that you can use in your soil. So but then I wonder that also have the urea deep placement, which is normally called the USD, urea super granules. So of seed also this we are also trying to promote the use of effective use of urea in the soil, so that by burying the instead of broadcasting, also you reduce the greenhouse emission from conventional fertilizer application methods. So instead of broadcasting urea, especially we know we know the volatility of urea because it's very volatile. As long as it's exposed to air, it's you know immediately exposed to the atmosphere, and you know leading to increase in the in greenhouse emission. So by the time you use your urea deep uh, displacement, you bury it in the soil and you cover it, and then the nutrients is, is um, gradually released in the, in the field, especially in the rice production, because rice, most rice production uh, practices in this part of the world is always, uh, you know, it's always uh, water flooded. So by the time you just broadcast the urea in it, then the reaction takes place and emits a lot of uh, toxic um, um, uh, gases like methane and coal even carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is also uh, affecting the atmosphere, which we have an issue of uh, the climate and change. So also we have the alternate wet and drying technology still under RA. In this case, we are trying to control the irrigation regime, especially in the rice field. This one also is a practice in rice production for reducing water wastage and reduction also in greenhouse emission through continuous flooding. So by the time continuing to flood, you have a lot of greenhouse emission even have a lot of sanity and some other zinc accumulation in the soil. So this also practice help to even manage the water we are having. Of course, already you know we all know that we are even having the issue of uh, depletion in the underground water. So that when this water is uh, adequately managed, then you will have um, more water underground the soil for other uh, farming practices. So I think this this could be the major four technologies that I think under RA we can move, which is uh, the biochar, the bokashi, the urea, the super granules, and then the alternate wet and drying uh, uh, technologies. Under the nutrient-sensitive agriculture, of course, in this case, we are trying to promote, now we are trying to promote uh, bio-fortified crops and um, bio-fortified crops such as um, quality protein maize. We know what that is. When we promote, we promote quality protein maize, uh, especially for the infants and even the uh, breastfeeding mothers, increase the the, the protein content of uh, whatever uh, food they are taking. We also have the issue of zinc millet, iron millet, and sorghum, and then even uh, pro vitamin A maize and cassava. So of course we know the use of iron in our system. It uh, helps to uh, improve the development of uh, the red blood cell, especially for the pregnant uh, women and even for children who are growing. And then of course we improve vitamin A for maize and, and, and cassava also helps in the in our eyesight. So those are some of the bar fortified crops that we try to promote so that uh, that, that can help us to increase or improve on the nutrient uh, consumption of, uh, of, of of the populace, especially among uh, women and uh, children. Of course, we also have the issue of um, uh, apart from bar fortified crops, we also have a uh, nutrient dense crops which in this case has to do basically with our vegetables. And we know the kind of uh, a lot of minerals that are derived from eating of a lot of vegetables. So with the advent of um, uh, poor, poor economic um, you know, level of most of our populace, we encourage them to take a lot of vegetables that they can get all these, uh, all these uh, nutrients, micronutrients from them, which has to do with them, um, which has to do with um, something like tomatoes, 
uh, onions, carrots, cabbages, and all those other vegetables that you can easily grow at your backyard. And once they consume them, you can expect them to have a balanced diet. And then the third pillar we're talking about is issue of market-oriented agriculture. And we discovered that in the case of market, we have this issue of information gap. Most farmers don't even know, cannot even access these markets. The markets are there, but there's no information of, about these markets, yeah. what the market needs, when they need them, the quantity they need, the, 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 the different um, um, uh, quality requirements, when they need them, and how they need them, even the prices, all those informations are not there. So, uh, Sasakawana is now promoting what we call an aggregation center. And this aggregation center is actually uh, a center that is we we started you know, holistically in Nasarawa State. We have two of them in Nasarawa State. We have we build an aggregation center with a store where they can actually store their produce. Then we also have um, uh, a meeting room where we train them and they can, the farmers can also meet and train themselves and have meeting. But we are talking about collective action here. But then of course we also have a, a processing unit where they can process whatever whatever they are producing, value addition, it could be either in a rice meal or maybe a maize meal, as the case may be. So based on this, we have this uh, center, and then we also have an app that we are promoting. It's called an Agroponto app. We call it a digital market access and an app that actually brings buyers and sellers together. So the farmers are encouraged to, to, to onboard and register on this app. It's free. And once you onboard, you register, you can then share information. Even once you open the app, you can then know people that have produce to sell, and even the buyers are there. Anybody in business, even the transporter, are there. in fact, the whole value chain actors, if I may use that word, are encouraged to onboard themselves into that app. Then issue of interaction and business deals and connection, uh, you know, take place in that app. Then we also have another approach, which we call the community service and investment in agribusiness, CSIA. Uh, it's not really new, but we try to customize it, um, package it more scientifically. In the Hausa language, we call it ASUSU, which I know a lot of our women group would have been doing it, where they are able within some time, they are able to accumulate some funds. Then after the accumulation of that funds, then they are able to begin to support their members within their groups with some capital. Because don't forget from the beginning, we said that MOA is trying to promote agriculture as a business, and business has to do with a lot of capital. So how do they get that capital that is not readily available to them at the formal commercial banks? because of the high interest rate and other conditions, conditionalities that most of these are small product farmers cannot meet. So we encourage them as a group to come together and see how they can mobilize funds for the, within their self in that group to be able to support themselves in their agricultural venture. That is how we call it community savings in agribusiness. So that whatever savings they're able to put together, they invest it in agricultural businesses not just production, any business along the value chain that has to do with agriculture. So that, that's what we do. And then uh, we have been trying to do these things and uh, we are encouraging our farmers to try and embrace uh, some of these, if not all of these approaches that we are trying to put forward. Because as I show you, in the long run, what we are just trying to achieve is that we want to, we want to see that the farmer take agriculture as a business, whatever aspect of actual value chain you are doing, or you are involved with, you should be taken as a business. And we also make sure that, especially in the areas of production, you should make sure that your production, your productivity, and your income and your livelihood increase and improve. And of course, we know that you have been using this soil for a very long time. So we also encourage you to, to adhere to some of these practices that we have to regenerate the soil hurt or the soil that because it's, uh, we cannot continue to take out of the soil without uh, taking, you know, giving it back those uh, nutrients that he desired. So I think with this, I will say thank you very much for your opportunity to discuss some of the new approaches that Sasakawa is actually disseminating to farmers across Nigeria at the moment. It's a pleasure having me. Thank you. We have been a part of big technology shifts as Africa witnesses a reawakening of the food system. Reflecting on those as big as they come, is why it is so important to make more accessible and useful for farmers. Rural Farmers Hub isn't just a success story, it is a growth story. We cannot achieve this without the support of our investors, partners, and friends. I thank our team dearly, a blend of passion and professionalism. 
we are not just business professionals. We are agricultural visionaries committed to reshaping the future of farming. To all the stakeholders, philanthropists, and impact investors listening, partnering with us is not just an investment. It is a catalyst for change. With your support, we can lead more farmers to a more productive and prosperous life. You will become part of our growing list of collaborators. Write an email today to kickstart a new growth story with us. Thank you.